What is that? Oh my gosh, I have a fish. How's it going YouTube? That's uh, that's Matt. That's Jake. That's me. I'm really tired. I don't know if this camera quality is trash. I had to get a new camera just for this trip. John B broke my lens. I don't know if it's his, it's probably AP. And I had to get a new camera and they didn't have the camera that I normally use and I had to get a step down and I think this quality is garbage. Anyways, we are fishing in western Nebraska today in Lexington. And we fished yesterday and it sucked. But today's a different day, gotta stay confident. With the morning bite we're gonna fish frogs, buzz baits, spinner baits, and uh, probably some soft plastics flipping and pitching. And we'll see what we can do. Enjoy the vlog. Rocking the uh, sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit. <whistles> Gourmet breakfast brought to you by uh, Jimmy Dean. Looks nasty. What are you thinking? I'm thinking these pop tarts. <laughs> They'll come in clutch real quick here. Yep, Jimmy Dean sandwich. Not a go. Going with the healthiest choice of all, Hostess Donuts. Right there. Yum. most important part of the trip, zebra cakes. Done with breakfast, gonna take all this stuff, we got a bunch of rods over there, bunch of tackle there, tackle there, cooler, all the good stuff, gonna go put it in the boat, and then we're gonna put the boat in the water. That's what the uh, the view looks like. Still nice and dark outside, so we, like you guys can see, those clouds over there, this lightning kind of came through. We don't, we don't really think we got hit by, by a storm last night. Nothing's wet. Well, this is the boat and truck rig just sitting here. And we're going to go back in the water. It'll probably still be a little dark by the time we get on the water. That's what you want, though, especially for an early morning topwater bite. The boat's loaded up. That is Matt and Jake's rods. These are my rods. I've got something in that rod locker down there. we got some tackle, more tackle, cooler. Those two compartments are filled with tackle as well. Morning, ladies. Look at this lake. That was like a 30 second drive, if you, ha if you didn't notice. All right, so this is the lake. This is Elwood Reservoir. In case you guys were wondering, we're staying at Elwood Reservoir Resort and we're gonna try to catch them on top water. Enjoy. There's one. Oh, big hike. Holy. Dude, that thing was giant. Oh, dude, he yanked my skirt down. Yep. Oh. That's why we come here, boys. You see the way you ate that frog? It's game on, boys. That's the way you want them to eat it. Good fish, start the day. I had one pike miss on the buzz bait. We're gonna get our best five, so let's weigh this thing. It's probably about two, two and a quarter. What'd I say, two and a quarter? Pretty dang close. 2.23, I was right, right on the money with that. Not a bad fish. See you later, little dude. So, it is 7.37. And uh, I have, I think I boated two. One beaver and one frog. Jake's boated one, Matt's got zero. So far it's tough, we fished a lot of different parts of the lake. It's dirty, a lot dirtier than I've ever seen it here. And uh, it's a lot, the water's super high. And we're, we thought we'd you know throw frogs and stuff. I got blown up by a big northern pike, I think this morning on a buzz bait. We're gonna head to a new spot of the lake and uh, see if we can catch them there. And if not, you know, I don't really know. Well, as you can see, we are not out on the water anymore. It's really dumb and I didn't fill up on gas. And the wind picked up a lot, and we basically decided we only have enough gas to get back once and not drive around and fish. Fishing wasn't good anyway, it's super windy, so what we're going to do is we're going to pack up, and we are going to go head to a small lake off the interstate and fish it for probably like two, maybe three hours, pretty much until we can't take the heat anymore, and then we're going to drive back to the cabin, maybe take a nap, relax, edit videos, and then, uh, then we'll go fishing tonight. 
Nice. We got gas in the boat, and now we are 20 minutes probably, about 20 minutes away from the lake, and it's uh, 9.15, so probably be fishing around 10 o'clock. Alrighty, well, that's the lake. It's real small, which is perfect, because we don't have a whole lot of time before it gets too hot. So we're uh, gonna throw the boat in the water, see if we can make some magic. Let's uh, see what we can do here. One hour later. Well, since I suck at fishing, Taking a lunch break, eating some Adeli Express uh, sandwich here. This would not be a uh, Fishing with Flair vlog without ships on the sandwich. Hopefully you guys can hear me, the wind's blowing. We finished up lunch, I'm gonna throw just the old standby in some deeper water, just to see if we can pull off a few fish before we go back to the cabin. No way. Jake got a fish? We got a fish, first fish of the trip. For, for uh, this little lake, whatever lake we're on. Is it a giant? Dude, it's huge! All right, Jake got a good fish. Good fish of the day, boys. A little offshore with the uh, Senko. Yeah, that'd be a two and a half, three pounder. Oh, come on. You got him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. My guess is like two and a half. 271. You guys can see that, hopefully. 271. Good fish. Uh, we might be on a pattern now, boys. You can release her back in the water. There she goes. Heck yeah, son! Woo! All right, since Jake's kicking my butt, I decided to bring out the good, the good, good juice here. Some old garlic BD. There we go. Slime that on there. That's how we like it. All right, we'll see if we'll see if I can catch the next fish. There's a fish. Yep. Yeah, buddy. It's like a two pounder. He's probably like two and a quarter. We'll get a we'll get a weight on him. Nice What'd I say? Two and a quarter. Two sixteen. I don't know if you guys can see that. Not a bad fish. Gonna let her go. Catch another one. one? I couldn't tell. What is that? Oh my gosh! I have a fish. Quit texting. Well, la -ti da There you go. I think he had it the entire time. I'm just stupid. Yeah. See you later. He might. There's one. It feels like a little better one. I didn't even set the hook. I thought it was weeds. There's a better one. Dude, they, they do fight so hard here. Look at that. Probably spawned out. One, nine, four. Not even a two-pounder. Not a bad fish, though. Is it big? Yeah, you got there you go. There you go. There we go. She choked it. There's one. Yep. She was deep, though. She was deep. She was not. She was not playing that shallow game. She might be skinny. It's kind of hard to tell. She's long. I don't think it's three, dude. These fish just seem so big when they jump. 262 on an 18 inch fish. That means they are skinny. <laughs> if that's what they weigh. All right, gonna get the release on this girl here. There she goes. There's one. Feels a little better. I didn't even set the hook. I thought it was weeds because I literally just cast it. That's the heaviest one for me. Yeah, that's probably the biggest one. Yep. Three, 302. You guys can't see it because the scale's all jacked up, but it's 302. I'll put the scale in the cooler. There it goes. There you go. That guy one is a giant. It's gotta be like a five pound. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, dude, that's a that's probably three. Two seven three. Nice dude. Almost a three. Go ahead and get the release. 
That's a good fish. Almost three pounder. Good work. Ready to go, boys. All right, we are off the water. Had a good day, actually. Actually turned out to be pretty good. Started off really crappy this morning. Ended up being really good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive back to our cabin uh, on Elwood Reservoir. 20 minutes later. So we just made it to, that's our cabin, the Elwood Resort on Elwood Reservoir in Lexington, Nebraska. I'm gonna do a recap of today's video and how we caught the fish. Hopefully you guys learned something. Well, end of the day here. You guys like when I do these recap deals, and honestly, I learned a lot today. I uh, fished a, a particular way that I've never really fished before. So the main technique is this dude right here. This is what you guys saw me. This is what you guys saw me throw most of the day. It'll focus in there. It is a Senko, 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 whatever you want to call it. It was a BPS, also known as Bass Pro Shop Sticko. It's basically a stick bait. This one is five inches long, I think five, maybe six. One, just the normal size, green pumpkin color. We got a 50 pack for like 10 bucks. I had a tungsten weight on there. My tungsten weight was probably about a quarter ounce. I don't have them labeled, but it wasn't a really heavy one with a four aught offset round bend worm hook. The rod was a Castaway Tyrannus seven foot mag heavy. The reel was a 7.5 to one gear ratio. And for line, I was using 17 pound Seaguar in Vizex fluorocarbon. 15 pound probably would have worked fine. I just had 17 pound. This is this is my jig rod that I like to use, and that's just the that's just the setup I put on there. But the main, the important thing is our technique. We showed up to this lake. We called them Interstate I-80 lakes. If you if you're in the area, you know there's just a ton of different lakes around. We pulled in there, super small. Uh, you could only fit a couple boats in there, and we started off. We did one whole circuit throwing chatter baits, spinner baits, and frogs. Did not see see a single fish, nothing. So we knew they were not up on the banks feeding. We noticed there's a bunch of grass growing up, a lot of tall stuff. You can see kind of offshore, that type of stuff. And so what we decided to do is kind of pull offshore. And actually my friend Matt came up with this rig. It's not like he invented it, but he came up with using it for the day. It is just a Texas rig. But what he did was he, we were, we were on the bank eating lunch. You guys saw, you know, I put champs on my sandwich, whatever. He just kind of bombed one out there into the middle of the lake. And he had one on and it came off. But we were sure as a fish, we saw his rod load up, it was fighting, popped off. So we, we, that kind of triggered an idea. Maybe these fish are offshore. It's super hot, it's 85 degrees. That's why I'm wearing this long sleeve. You guys see me? I never wear long sleeves in my videos. I'm always wearing short sleeves. But skin cancer sucks. So I made an effort on this trip to make sure I had a long sleeve shirt. Uh, these are one of those UV ones. This, one's a, this one is what all the YouTubers wear. That's what I got. It's pretty sweet. It's a salty scales one and it's the freshwater edition. If you guys want it, link is in the description, but I've seen one rod wear it, I've seen Fluke wear it. It's a pretty sick shirt. It was hot, so I was making sure to stay off the, sh off the bank a little bit. We were keeping the boat in about 10 feet of water, casting on the weed lines, and just dead sticking it. Uh, my friend Jake was the one who caught like the first two or three fish. He'd throw it out there, let it sit there, and it would not move. And they would just be there. They'd just pick it up it, from it laying on the bottom. We think they were just tucked up in the weeds, and if you brought your Sanko, your stick bait, right next to it, they'd come out of the weeds, swim down, pick it up, and go back in. And then also, you guys saw me, after Jake caught a bunch of fish, I pulled this stuff out. I get a ton of questions about this type of stuff, and it's scent. It's Bass Dynasty. This was garlic. This is the first time I tried the garlic scent. I've tried some of the crawfish on jigs before. This stuff works phenomenal. It just gives you a little extra edge. For me, it's more mental confidence. You know, I put that stuff on there, if I'm throwing something like a Sanko, something that's dead sticking, you don't always have contact with the lure. A lot of times they pick it up and they may have it for 5-10 seconds before you realize it. And so putting something like just scent, it doesn't even have to be like a garlic scent, it could be literally any scent. Anything that does not smell like rubber, or tastes like rubber to them, will get them to hold on just a little bit longer, gives you extra time, feel them, so they catch more fish. I'm sure this video is plenty long, you guys saw us fail this morning, but we came back with a victory. We're going to go back out fishing later this afternoon, so look forward to part 2. Peace. There's one. Oh, big mother pike. Holy.